good morning, everyone. My name is Jesse. I hope it's okay if, if uh, I do this in English. It would be very painful for you and for me if we did this in Swedish or Norwegian. Um, so my name is Jesse, and this is where I work. I'm a PhD at the University of Bergen, Norway. Um, and I wanted to tell you about a project called Klima Budget 2.0. Um, I'm not going to be doing this by myself. If the technique uh, works, we will be joined by a project partner, Björn Erik Nordby. He is um, an uh, environmental strategist at the uh, municipality of Asker, close to Oslo. And he's going to be telling us about working with this concept called Klima Budget. Now, I thought I would start with a small little provocation, which I think last night felt like, like a provocation, this morning a bit less so, because we've heard from quite a lot of interesting talks. But my provocation is as follows. This quote by uh, Charles Dudley Warner. He's a novelist from the 20th century. And he tells us, everybody talks about the weather, but nobody does anything about it. And actually, what he meant is, uh, he wa I think he was talking about climate and carbon budgets. And, uh, and actually, what he said, I think, was everybody talks about carbon budgets, but no one does anything about it. Um, I wanted to use that as a sort of um, to, to open up the discussion. Um, I think carbon budgets have been an extremely useful tool to frame local climate action. Uh, but I think the question now, uh, I think we've been five years since the first report in Yarfella. Uh, the question now is how can we turn those carbon budgets into fundable, into measurable uh, actions locally? And that's something that we've been exploring in this Klima Budget 2.0 project. So it builds on two um, budgeting uh, practices or ideas. And the first one that you are extremely familiar with is the local carbon budget as they are applied here in Sweden. I guess I should be close to the microphone. Um, so undeniably, the, the um, local carbon budgets have been a tool for framing local climate action, right? Downscaling the Paris Agreement to Swedish municipalities um, the idea behind it is, all right, there is a finite amount of carbon that we can emit. And in most cases, it has been a strong challenge to local climate targets, not only for their cumulative nature, but also the ambition, 10 to 15% em um, emission reduction per year. Um, that has been very strong in Sweden. In Norway, about the same time, uh, the city of Oslo released its first climate budget. Uh, which is a, has been described as a process or governance tool integrated in the work of municipalities. So it's a way of um, allocating, uh, like, or I guess it's a way of allocating funds, measures, and attention to climate measures. So it's owned by the financial department of uh, a city, and it's uh, based on a yearly cycling of assessing measures, uh, putting funding towards it, and putting them into a climate budget for the city to then see okay, this is how we are working with climate, and how is this working towards reaching our emission goals? Those two perspectives are, however, quite a bit different. Uh, there has been a number of initiatives out there to try and uh, work on the uh, carbon budget side of things, and, you know, the Klima Secretariat, but also more recently there's been, a, I think, a, an effort to try and standardize that method. And here are two other initiatives. On the other side, I, to my understanding, what is happening right now in Norway is quite original and one of the only ways I have found so far to integrate that work within municipalities. Our project is to try to combine the two together. And the question really is, can we integrate those two perspectives in the way that municipalities work? Can they be ambitious, but also work with that kind of ambition internally? Um, all right, a quick overview of those two different perspectives. Now, the first one, as you all know, really sort of starts from the global to the local. And I think it sort of is a quite a, a big contrast to the Klima budget perspective, which works mostly locally and internally. Um, when we look at responsibility, the carbon budget looks at or considers all of the actors within a region. That is also the case for Klima budget. Though the way it would look at climate work, it would look at it in different perspectives, and that depends really of which city you're looking at. 
Often cities that have started to work with the Klima budget, they have worked with their internal organizations and their in internal uh, activities. So let's say buses, heating, uh, food meals, for example. Then they consider direct emissions within the territory of their citizens. And for some of the most ambitious cities, we've also uh, seen that some of them are looking at consumption emissions and looking for targets to address those emissions. Um, in terms of temporality, and uh, sorry for the highly academic sort of perspective here, but I think it's quite an important one. There is, with the carbon budget on the left-hand side, quite a strong focus on the year-to-year -year assessment of how we are doing in the municipality, which is also the case for a climate budget, yet for a climate budget, it's a lot more structured within the year. So here we see a quite big focus on what kind of activities are happening within municipalities and how are they organizing to address or structure the climate work. And finally, the, as a matter of looking at climate action, there is quite a big focus on top-down um, sort of needs for climate action from a carbon budget perspective. On the other side, it's um, more of a bottom-up approach where the work really is anchored into organizational practices, so accounting, measures, evaluation. And so it really treats, and I think that's the most important point for the climate budget, it really treats climate as an integrated issue across different departments. So I wasn't sure um, how familiar some of you were with the climate budget perspective. So here is a quick guide about how to set up a climate budget. This is clearly not from us in the organization. It's from um, a company called, or, or, um, organization called CAR-S, which have been helping municipalities in Norway to develop their cl uh, climate budget. So he, he, here is a quick guide. Uh, the first step is to start up your process, and you do that by um, organizing the, your climate budget work locally. You invite actors from different organizations within the municipality. You set up a group. You define what the, carb what the climate budget will be focusing on. So what kind of emissions are we considering? What kind of targets? What kind of sectors? Uh, and you try, and I think that is the key, to integrate that work uh, with the financial budget. The, finan the, the financial department is the one responsible for gathering all of that information into the final report. Um, so it really links with the already ongoing work in municipalities. Second step is to prepare and calculate your different measures. Um, the way that that has been happening so far is that we, we ask municipalities to identify where their business as usual curve is, where the target is, and then how every single measure contributes to that target. So the idea really is to identify measures and to try to assess their emission reduction potential. Uh, the idea is that those are assessed, and at the end of the year, they are um, efficient, uh, accumulated, to sort of have a sense of how much in 2022 they hope to reduce emission by. Um, a key third step is to communicate that work, and that's what we as researchers, I guess, would get. We get a nice report that looks at what the climate budget of a city is. So you have a nice structure of which sector, which target, by when, who pays for it, who are the actors doing it. And I'll give you a quick little overview of what that looks like afterwards. And finally, you report. And in a way, I want to say you start again, because then you receive feedback from your emissions, from your accounting. You can then look back at your documents, think of, uh, for, of, of other measures, and then start to, to think of other measures and push that work forward. What does a climate budget look like in practice? Um, this is from one of the project partners, Westland uh, Filke, the region of Westland. And so you see that on the, on the left side, you, you can identify the sector, which intervention are they thinking about, who is responsible for it, and finally, what are the quantified effects, if it's possible to do so. Now, Coming from a carbon budget perspective, I think when I encountered this, I thought this is great. This is one way of really showing and anchoring that work locally. And I think if I could think of three advantages that this um, approach offers, the first one is transparency and accountability. It's a way of following up climate measures and really seeing how we are doing. 
The second is it does work to increase ambition. And we see often municipality after having done one or two rounds of internal accounting and internal uh, climate budget, they then start to think about territorial or consumption based uh, emissions. And finally, it's a way to mainstream climate change across different silos. So here you would see the Department of uh, Education and Building and Transport working together and identifying measures and trying to find a common language to, to talk about these things. But there are also challenges. And I think now is uh, time for Bjorn Eric to actually give us an in blick about how that looks like in practice. So. I have about 20 slides, so we won't have lunch. No, I'll, uh, I'll go for it uh, a bit faster, and, and I hope that perhaps we can have a discussion afterwards. But so we are at the start of this project, and right now we have done the first step, which is uh, developing carbon budgets for Norwegian municipalities, building on the same methods that we applied here in Sweden. The second step will be to look at what are... Uh, we have a sound problem that I need to address by turning off the mic. There you go. The second step would be to look at what are policies and measures that would be bringing us in line with those Paris compliant pathways. A third step would be looking at implementation. And here we have started to work uh, with a board game that we work with different municipalities on what are measures that are easier to implement, what are those that are more difficult. For those that are more difficult, what else do you need from us? to implement those further or to make them more palatable or to communicate them better. And finally, the ambition is to try to have a tool that would be accessible. So a quick uh, outlook. We have done this work on a territorial and consumption basis, trying to look at what, in this case, city of Askel should look like. And the dotted line is what, uh, what a dummy target could be. And this is using uh, sort of a cumulative nature. The idea is that we are able to highlight what this target within a municipality would imply for the rest of the world. If any other municipality would behave the same in Norway, and every country would behave the same as Norway. That's the idea. And we hope that this can be used to also have then discussions about not only the target, but the shape of the pathway and how do we get there. <coughs> We had a workshop earlier this year with uh, some municipalities from Sweden coming to Norway to exchange about carbon and climate budget. Uh, to go quickly over it, we had, yeah, exploring complementarity between those two approaches, but also looking at different ways of visualizing. This is one example that came out. Can we think of a carbon budget based on a two-year basis um, to sort of take into account variations in weather, which implies differences in emissions? for example. Now, from our side, there's still challenges remaining. And the first one is to think of um, what measures, what indicators do we use to assess whether consumption is moving or not. And this is the next step in our work, is to develop a database of consumption indicators that could be used where the data would be available locally. We are also exploring ways of accounting for uh, the uptake of forest in Norwegian municipalities. And here it's a, wor um, a work of exploring proxies that could be used. And finally, I think which is for me the most exciting one is uh, to look beyond CO2 emissions as a metric. Now, uh, a bicycle path, of course, could be seen as a potential climate measure, but it could also be argued from a health perspective, from a safety perspective, from a green corridor. So can we, uh, can we also use those metrics or other metrics to also argue for climate projects or projects that have a climate implication? In the work of um, developing or being more ambitious locally with climate, the municipality is endowed with a number of, uh, of activities, whether you are looking at convening, partnering, target setting, but also a municipality is a provider of services. And amongst these, other f these different things, I think the, oops, Venta. The I would argue that the carbon budget only covers parts, parts of what we need to be doing 
to address these issues. Uh, yesterday, we had a really nice panel that we finished the day with, and I just stole a quote from one of the persons in that panel. That person said, a carbon budget is a common compass to guide where a city's climate work should be going. And if you, um, I guess, would allow me a, a corny metaphor, I think we don't only need a compass, we also need a map or other types of tools, which I think a climate budget can help us more with, while having some overlap in some of those areas. So that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was very interesting. Uh, I would like to uh, start by just uh, opening up, opening up to uh, our guests from municipalities, and and uh, you're free to ask your questions in in uh, Swedish. And I would also like to ask a question to you. Uh, uh, ser ni möjligheten att applicera det här tänkandet inom uh, era organisationer? Uh, jag tror att det är helt nödvändigt för oss att integrera i det ekonomiska systemet. Det är någonstans den muren vi går emot hela tiden i vårt jobb. Och också integrera klimat så att varje förvaltning eh, tar ansvar för sina, sitt klimatutsläpp. Eh, ja, vi, vi Uppsala kommun har ju ett beslut på att vi ska ta fram... Alltså vi har ju någon slags budget och det finns något eh, nytt slags beslut på det. Men jag är tyvärr helt inte insatt i detaljerna. Det sitter några här uppe som säkert vet mer. Eh, men vi jobbar ju på det här så jag tänker att det är nog förhoppningsvis var inspirerande eh, för oss alla här. Jag kan bara hålla med Falkenberg här att det är att koppla till vår budgetprocess och pengarna som investeras. Det är helt nödvändigt för att vi ska kunna se vad vi gör. Så stort intresse helt enkelt. Mm. Mm. Har vi några? Nu ska se här har vi. Så jag tror Mikael var först. Ja, tack så mycket för det. Går det bra att ställa frågan på svenska eller? Ja, det var en jättebra presentation och intressant. Jag tänkte på, när, när vi pratade, du, du nämnde lite kort på slut om, om intäktsbudgeten. För vi pratar ju normalt sett bara om alltså kostbudgeten, alltså utsläpp, inte vad, vad vi har för potential att, att binda in. Men jag är lite nyfiken på, har ni liksom byggt upp någon slags intäktsbudget, alltså parallellt med era, en utsläppsbudget så att säga. Så att ni, ni kan ju också genom påverkan skapa kolinbindning och så att säga fixering. Eh, har, ni, har ni ett sånt arbete när ni tittar på det? Whether we are looking within the, the, the project. Uh, but but yeah. you also have a revenue budget. I mean, how much can you, f uh, how much carbon can you capture with, yeah. with your activities? Not only how much will you emit. Yeah, Do you yeah. work on the both aspects. Um, I, th I think that sounds great. Um, I think we, it's not part of the scope of the project yet, but I think we are looking at what is happening in other countries. And I think um, just from my side, I know France has been working on methodologies to account for these things. And so we hope that perhaps in another version of this project, we could sort of complement that type of visualization, like for a tool for a municipality. I think that'd be very useful, but it's not yet the plan, sadly. Tack så mycket Jesse för en jättespännande presentation. Och du som har fött, fötterna i både Sverige och Norge och känner till kommuner i båda länderna. Finns det någon kommun i Sverige som har hunnit så här långt och har lyckats integrera klimatbudget med den ordinarie finansiella budget och mål och budgetsystemet? Whether it is one municipality in Norway that has done so, in that Sweden. that could in in Sweden, yeah. Norway is much more ahead I with this methodology. I think the method really came out of Oslo's w hard work. Um, now we see that most of the, I think, all of the big cities in Norway have a climate budget, and now we see a wave of smaller, medium-sized cities also adopting a budget. Um, in Sweden. 
I'm, I'm afraid to like I'm afraid to say that like I'm not the right person to ask that. I think I would then look at Andesh or <laughs> some of you working with those issues. Um, I would say try to push Stockholm or, or some of the big cities to put a bit of money into that because they would I think pave the way for other cities like Uppsala and yeah, to get into it. With hi Jesse, with this uh, bottom up perspective, how do you define the the budget for? Uh, for a municipality, uh, the the carbon budget is defined by IPCC. But how do you define the the goal? So the goal is is, uh, is agreed upon politically by like we in this project uh, we don't question the goal. We just look at how they organize to reach the goals. Um, and so I think the ambition, this perhaps the secret ambition of this project, is also to sort of bring some of the. Uh, the talk in, in Sweden on the carbon budget. So to try to provide an, uh, a cumulative perspective on target setting, but also a more ambitious way of thinking about what our target should be. Though I need to say that for a lot of the cities in Norway, the big cities, I'm thinking about Oslo, I'm thinking about Bergen, which I work with, if you look at their territorial um, scope one, two targets, they are extremely ambitious. They want to be close to zero in 2030. So you could, we could analyze whether that's in line with Paris or not. I think the work now is still to sort of say, okay, but how do we still get there? Because it, it remains a significant challenge anyway. Yeah. Stort tack, en stor applåd för